Well, hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome back to Cyphernetics. Well, the new trailer for the new Ghostbusters movie has just dropped. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is the new movie. It's uh, going to be out next year, and it looks pretty amazing. On top of being a huge Star Trek fan, I'm also a massive Ghostbusters fan as well. So today we're going to take a look at this new trailer for the new film, go through it shot by shot, take a look at some of the shots, see if we can work out a little bit about what's going on with the plot, who's in it, what the story's all about, and uh, and yeah, just take a bit of a bit of a deep dive into what we can extract from that trailer and work out what we're up for in the new Ghostbusters movie. I'm such a good big Ghostbusters fan. In fact, uh, I did a, a Ghostbusters movie a couple of years ago with my kids. Uh, it went a bit viral on YouTube, uh, and it's almost up to about four million views by now. So if you haven't seen that movie, it's definitely worth taking a look at. Click up here, and you can check out that uh, that Ghostbusters movie I did with my kids, which is a bit of fun. Let's get in. To this new trailer for the new Ghostbusters Frozen Empire movie. Have a look at that and, uh, and as we go we'll chat about uh, yeah, just what exactly we're seeing in the trailer and what we're up for in the new movie. <laughs> Tell me it's going to be another hot one out there. In fact, there are heat alerts in effect for New Jersey, feeling like 100 degrees. <laughs> Well, the trailer starts off with an 80s track by Banana Rama called Cruel Summer, which is a track from 1984, which is obviously the same year that the original Ghostbusters movies came out into cinemas. So I love that kind of retro 80s feel. New York City, it's fantastic. <laughs> uh, there was something missing about the last Ghostbusters movie that was set in the country that kind of just felt to me like we were missing a, 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 an ingredient of, of Ghostbusters. And I think that New York City environment is what Ghostbusters is at its heart. So it's great to see that New York is back uh, as the setting for this new film. It's the middle of summer, there's a bit of a heat wave going on. We're getting clips from people in the street, and it definitely seems looking at the cars on the street, this is set present day. We're set this film in 2023, but there's certain 80s sensibilities that are in this trail. People, the t-shirts the and, and clothes that they're wearing, the girls on the beach. There's a definite kind of 80s flavor to this, despite it being set present day, which I think is fantastic. <laughs> what is that? We see the massive storm incoming and shots of people on the beach looking out to the ocean very uh, tentatively. It kind of almost reminds me of sort of scenes like in Jaws where you had everybody on the beach and everyone's kind of having fun and then, you know, something's happening in the water that's uh, quite troubling and suddenly everybody's mood changes from having a nice day on a sunny summer afternoon to something that's incredibly terrifying and dangerous. And then we get the icicle rain. We've got the massive storm rolling in, and storms are always in Ghostbusters associated with some, you know, very powerful uh, ghost spirit, like, you know, Gozer and everything with that massive storm cloud that uh, was in the first film. We've got the storm rolling in, we've got the icicle rain that's going on, stabbing into the ground, everyone's running for their life. It's pretty dangerous kind of stuff, and uh, obviously the uh, the temperature has, has dropped significantly uh, from a nice hot 37 degrees Celsius, or about 100 degrees Fahrenheit a day in summer there, to, to freezing kind of temperatures. So it's a great opening and a way into the story that really kind of sets up the, uh, the story, which I think is really, uh, really great. We've got the ice, spears, punching up through the ground, lifting cars off the road. It's like an earthquake rippling down the street of New York 
right up to the front door of Ghostbusters headquarters as all of the ground freezes over and we see that Ghostbusters firehouse, the iconic Ghostbusters firehouse. And we get those three little high-pitched piano notes that do -do -do to, to indicate there's something creepy going on. Classic Ghostbusters score, Elmer Bernstein style. So cool. And then we get Ecto-1 doing a, a screaming U-turn in the middle of the street. Obviously, the call has gone out. There's something strange in the neighborhood and who you're going to call. We all know who. For the first time in New York history, people froze to death in the middle of July. What is it? The death chill. The power to kill by fear itself. Your veins turn to rivers of ice. Next, we get a bit of a glimpse at who is in this film. Well, obviously, we have McKenna Grace back as Phoebe, the granddaughter of Egon Spengler. She's standing there, she's obviously in the Ghostbusters firehouse in New York. She's standing next to the fireman's pole there we know and love. Uh, we've obviously got Trevor, played by Finn Wolfhard, who was in the first film. Patton Oswalt is doing the voiceover, talking about uh, people uh, freezing to death in the middle of summer in New York. I wonder whether Patton Oswalt is kind of playing a bit of a scientist kind of character perhaps. Maybe he's kind of filling the gap that was once filled by Harold Ramis as Egon Spengler. Bit of more of a sort of scientific kind of capacity there from him perhaps. Obviously got Carrie Coon uh, back in this. Uh, we've got uh, Podcast who was in the first film as well. A new addition to the cast with uh, Kumail Nanjiani who's a, obviously a, a, a very funny comic actor who's been in many uh, different films I think would be a, a good addition to, uh, to this film. Dan Aykroyd he's back as Ray Stance. Paul Rudd's back as uh, Gruberson. Looks like everybody's on a bit of a vacation from New York. I wondered how they were going to crowbar all these characters that uh, normally, uh, you know, a school teacher in uh, country um, America and so forth, and a lot of characters that were in the first film are all being transplanted from the country town that they uh, they were in into New York City. So I guess maybe everybody happens to be out in New York for a vacation, perhaps, or everyone's moved, or yeah, well, interesting to find out what the what the story is there. And of course, we've got uh, you know Venkman. Bill Murray, you know, you, we, it, I really hope in this film we get the Ghostbusters in it a bit more, the original Ghostbusters, because really in the first film, although I loved the appearance by, you know, Ray Venkman and, and Winston, we really only got them right at the very end of the film for a sort of a very brief cameo right at the end. I kind of thought uh, in that first film we, they were going to have more of a presence, a bit more like how when... Um, say uh, Spider-Man uh, No Way Home came out, we had more of an active presence by uh, you know, uh, Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire involved in the plot for that film. I thought Ghostbusters Afterlife would have more of the Ghostbusters in it, but they kind of only came in right at the end of the film, so hopefully they'll be more of a, uh, a feature in this new film. We see the lions outside of the, uh, the New York Public Library there, which we saw right at the beginning of the original Ghostbusters film, coming to life, uh, scaring the crap out of some poor bystander there uh, on his way uh, in to check out a book or something, I suppose. So great to see that link again back to the very first film or whatever in that, um, that library location. We see the earthquake of icicles ripping through the floor of the Ghostbusters firehouse right up to the Ecto-1 and the Ghostbusters ghost containment facility being breached. We've got the, the wall all around that, you know, cracking and everything. So it seems like uh, if there's anything being held in that uh, containment facility, it's not going to be in there for too long based on the damage that's being done to the building and also New York. Your bones crack and the last thing you see your own tear ducts freezing up. Like, literally scared to death? <laughs> so cool. We see a ghost of some kind, I think, uh, plugging, looks like they're plugging something into their brain. Maybe not a ghost because it looks solid, but certainly uh, possibly uh, some kind of statue or some sort of physical form, a bit like the terror dogs or whatever, 
I guess, uh, rather than being a ghost, they were actually a physical manifestation of a ghost. Maybe we've got another kind of variation on that, or even, you know, something like Goza, for example, uh, in the first film. We see a slight modification to the costumes, obviously because of this chill that's come through New York, uh, everything is freezing cold. So we've got a modification to some of the Ghostbusters uh, uniforms. Uh, they've now got kind of turtlenecks and wearing gloves and everything. We see these red uh, Parker jackets or whatever as well that seem to be a, a new addition to the outfit. We see Kumail Nanjiani's character opening up some hidden door. It looks like the, the back of a, a cupboard or something. Uh, he's opening it and there's sort of gold trim and ornate things on the wall as if it's some sort of secret ancient hidden vault that they've uncovered which uh, you know it looks really interesting like some ancient crypt or worshipping temple that's hidden in some back of some building in New York from from you know a hundred or two hundred years ago perhaps so I'm sensing there's going to be a whole new mythology wrapped up in whatever ghost is attacking New York City uh, in this film we see Lucky uh, she's getting frozen by the um, the sudden cold snap that's coming in there uh, as a narrated by uh, Pat Oswalt in terms of the effects of, of what actually happens during, I guess, the presence of this entity. And we see Trevor firing off a, uh, a proton stream there in one of the last shots of this trailer. <laughs> we can look at the ghost in this film, very slim, tall, slender ghost with glowing blue eyes walking towards all of those ice shards coming out of the ground, very creepy. And in the last shot of this trailer, I think um, Paul Rudd is definitely echoing uh, our sentiments. It's like, oh, oh, this looks like it might be a bit of fun. Uh, so uh, he's chuckling there. We've got Trevor and uh, and Phoebe and Carrie Coon's character, I think it's Callie, and Gruberson all uh, in Ghostbusters garb with, uh, with the Ghostbusters tech as well. I, I hope we're going to get the other Ghostbusters uh, gearing up as well at, um, in this film as, as well, Venkman and uh, we saw uh, Winston obviously there. Definitely looks like we're in for a very fun ride in this new Ghostbusters movie out in US Spring 24, which I guess would put that at being somewhere between, you know, March, April, May or thereabouts next year, one of those three months. I don't like it when movies say spring and autumn because it, it, it completely cancels out half of the half of the globe where, that we have our seasons in different times of the year. I wish they'd just say coming in May or coming in April or something rather than a season because, yeah, it, you, you're cancelling out half of the planet. This looks like a great movie. We've got heaps of uh, callbacks from the first film. All of our characters are returning. Hopefully we get the original Ghostbusters having more of an involvement in this film. Um, and I love the fact that it's set in New York. Fantastic setting. And I think Ghostbusters film, it's, a, it's an... It, a necessary ingredient into, into a Ghostbusters film. So I can't wait for this movie. Looks great. Guys, let me know what you think. Leave a thought in the comments section. Leave me know uh, what you think of this new Ghostbusters film, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, uh, coming soon to cinemas. Uh, I think it's going to be great. Uh, guys, if you haven't subscribed to Cyphernetics yet, don't be shy to do so. Click on that big subscribe button to stay current and up to date with all the latest sci-fi TV and movie news on YouTube. Uh, if you want to check out some of my merch, heaps of cool uh, sci-fi related merch stuff in my merch store. T-shirts, hoodies, mugs, caps, you name it, it's all there. Um, and uh, all at very reasonable prices and helping support the channel. Uh, I'll be back very soon with my next video. Thanks guys, I'll see you soon.